Everyone's talking about AI agents these days, but they're not asking the most important question, which is how much freedom should we actually grant them? So what is an AI agent? Well, let's back up a little. A lot of what people are calling agents are in fact not agents at all. They are scripted automatons, prompt templates, or to be blunt, macros. But things are changing. An AI agent is basically a system for taking action. It's not a predetermined series of actions. It's something that can take a request and hopefully accomplish a goal. Here's my take. I believe in the next few years, we're gonna see a departure away from these thinking fast AI systems. Ones that are really based on pattern matching against pre-trained knowledge to generate instant responses. Think of this as kind of like Daniel Kahneman's System One Thinking in Humans. Thinking that's fast, instinctive, intuitive, and ultimately based on learned responses. Instead, with agentic AI, we're gonna see more thinking slow approaches. Ones that are based on reasoning at inference time. Ones that are adaptive, responsive to feedback, and can ultimately take in information from the environment and use that to recalibrate their approach. So this brings us to the question of autonomy and independence. AI agent autonomy is a bit of a conundrum. On one hand, you don't get the efficiency gains, the cost savings, the boost in productivity, unless you actually let machines do meaningful work. On the other hand, no one wants to be the leader that authorizes a system that does some serious damage, whether it's a financial disaster, a public relations scandal, or lets a human being be hurt or harmed. You would think that the obvious decision rule is to assess the level of risk involved and, for anything significant, make sure that a human in the loop is present. But that would also be a mistake. Where flawed, we're biased, we're subject to cognitive dissonances, we're very rarely objective. And this means that when it comes to critical decisions, we're often the worst people who should be in charge. Think about an example like Waymo. Technically, you've got a team of operators that are constantly monitoring the operations of this self-driving fleet. Now, theoretically, if there was some kind of problem, they could step in. But of course, they rarely, if ever, do so. Not only would this be disastrous for the economics of the business, because now you've essentially got a team of very expensive AI engineers doing the work that used to be done by Uber drivers. But more than that, it would be dangerous. Think about the latency involved if humans are trying to control a vehicle potentially thousands of miles away. There are other similar examples where Essentially, the transaction or the interaction is too high speed for humans to be safely in the loop. I'm thinking of high frequency trading, threat detection systems, or even medical monitoring platforms. But what if there was another approach? What if rather than designing a safety system based on our perception of the magnitude of the risks involved, we instead focused on our capability to understand and delineate the nature of the risk itself? So consider three types of problems. The first type of problem are complicated problems. These are difficult to keep track of, but ultimately they're also manageable and describable. Consider a pharmaceutical company that's releasing a new drug. There's probably a whole bunch of regulatory disclosures that need to be made, or a financial institution. The central bank puts the rates up, they need to make a whole bunch of changes to their financial instruments and to their disclosures and policy statements. These are ideal problems for some kind of rule-based, deterministic system, like robotic process automation. Once these systems are set up, they can be trusted to run autonomously and just checked occasionally to see that they're running within set parameters. The second type of problems are ambiguous problems. This is a situation where you don't have enough data to really know how things are going to play out. And this is where AI agents become very useful. Examples could include granting a loan, uh, or triaging a situation in some kind of disaster response, attributing a salesperson to a new sales lead. This is a case of really a known unknown. We don't know how things are going to actually happen, but we know if we collect more data, we can increase our statistically likelihood of getting it right. And this is exactly where machines tend to work very well. 
They don't always get it right, but frankly, they often do a better job than us because humans with our known cognitive biases, our lack of objectivity, tend not to make good decisions in ambiguous situations on a continuously reliable basis. Now, really, this is a situation where you're not trying to empower human beings with AI to make better decisions. It's actually quite the opposite. You want human beings to train the machines to get better with time, so honestly, they can just get out of the way and the machines can run it themselves. The final category of problems are ones that are inherently uncertain. This is an example of unknown unknowns. It's not a problem of lack of data, but rather a lack of understanding of the domain itself. It's very dangerous to grant autonomy to AI agents to solve uncertain problems because they simply lack the training data to encounter these sort of situations. Humans are much better equipped because they have the originality, the adaptability, and of course, the resilience when things inevitably go sideways. That's not to say that AI is not relevant at all. It's just that tools like generative AI become far more useful in helping human decision makers explore the boundaries of the knowledge. It's just that when it comes to making the tough decision, you're much better off with the human with the finger on the trigger. Honestly, this is a tricky time for AI. There's no doubt that we've made incredible progress with foundation models, but there is growing concern that large language models are now hitting scaling issues. Basically, the brute force approach of adding more data and compute may not lead to significant improvements in the future. If we're gonna to get to the next level of AI, we've gotta build reasoning systems that derive insights at inference time. We've gotta find ways of unlocking all the value of that proprietary enterprise data. And probably we need to embody that intelligence in the form of potentially billions of AI agents that are operating in the real world. That's why autonomy is so important. If we want to build agents that are able to make better decisions that are commercially valuable, we're going to have to probably let them off the leash. A good AI agent is not so different from being a good leader. Sure, making the right decision is important, but it's not as important as your capability to design an organizational-wide system for evaluating and executing high-quality decisions at industrial scale. Reducing uncertainty is the name of the game, because ultimately your ability to create a good decision-making system, whether it's made by people or machines, is the first step to unleashing a scalable, autonomous, AI-powered organization of the future.